Hey guys, welcome back to our PineScript video tutorial series. So in the previous lecture, we talked about variable types and in that video, we talked about strings and how you can use strings and how you can assign strings to different identifiers. Now in this video, we're going to go over booleans and we're going to discuss the colors and how you can use colors in PineScript. And after that, we're going to see how you can reassign a variable if you have if you want to reassign or change the variable then there is a specific way that you can do that and after that we're gonna go over tuples and we're gonna see how tuples can be useful to you in your your user defined functions so first of all let's talk about booleans now as you can see booleans can only have two types they can either be true or false okay so here we have boolean 1 that is false and boolean 2 which is true and here we have a plot function which is plotting the close and then we have an argument that is track price which is set to false now if you are not sure how it works so let me show you here if we go to plot there are different arguments that you can put the first one is series then title color line width and it goes on you can also see that the sixth argument is track price which is set to false now if I click on this click on the plot it's gonna uh, pop up the window and if we go to track price here you can say that the track price input should be a boolean and if true then the horizontal price line will be drawn but by default this is set to false so let me go ahead and save it and add this to chart and let's see so here you can see it plotted all the closes of the these candles and since this track price is set to false it did not put a horizontal line but if I set it to true what it's gonna do is it's gonna put a horizontal line which is going to track the price as well so let me set this to true and let me save it and then add to chart and now as you can see here that it also put a horizontal line there in order to track the price okay and in a similar way since I've already set boolean 2 to true I can also use that variable here in order to make the track price true so let me save it and let me add this to chart again you can see that it's set to the horizontal line is drawn if I change this to one it will again will not be plotting any lines so here you can see it did not track the price All right now let's discuss the colors and let me comment these so that we don't go over we don't get any difficulty so these are commented and let me uncomment these so colors now you can also assign colors as a variable to the identifiers here we have the color one which is assigned the yellow argument or the yellow color yellow and here we have in the form of yellow in hexadecimal okay and and here we have the yellow in the form of hexadecimal and then we have color three so now if we plot the closes and set the argument color to color two that is basically our yellow in hexadecimal and put the title color in there then it's gonna plot the closes but instead of the plot line being blue this time the plot line is going to be yellow so if I add this chart and here you can see the plot line is yellow and it's important to put the title in there let me show you the importance of this so if I we can also see the all the titles that we have given to our output from here and you can see the variable and the types and here we have the color so now since we have only have one that's why it's only showing color but if we don't give the give it the title and just move without the title what's gonna happen is it's gonna give it by default the plot name okay so when we have multiple plot functions all of them are going to be named plot which is not very helpful okay so in order to differentiate between them it's important for us to give title to each plot function so that we can differentiate between them and there are multiple plot functions all right let me show you this by example and 
let me unformat this and now let me again save and plot it and now you can see there is plot and color so in a similar way as the number of plots are going to increase we're not going to see which plot represents which chart so that's why it's important for us to give title to each plot function okay and now let me go down and let me comment this now we have the reassigning of variable so there's a specific way through which you can reassign a variable and if i in other programming languages or specifically in python what you can do is just retype the variable name and give it a new value so if i do this here it's gonna give me an error okay as you can see my var variable is already defined that's because we have already given the variable my variable a value of one and it's not again going to take another value with the same syntax so in order to reassign a variable what we have to do is we have to use this special we have to use a special symbol which is comprised of a semicolon and an equal sign so now if i go ahead and save it it's gonna save now now my variable is reassign the value of two instead of one now our my variable is equal to two now let's talk about tuples tuples are specifically helpful in user defined functions okay and when you want to return more than one variable so here in PineScript, uh, the version 3 we only had an option in which we could return only one value but in PineScript 4 we can return more than one value in our tuples so here we have f get high low and this is basically returning the highs and lows of the candle let me close these so this is basically returning the highs and lows of the candles you might not be able to understand this thoroughly right now but once we go over user defined functions in our course you will definitely be understanding how this works so here this is basically returning these highs and lows and we have f is equal to uh, f get high low okay now i'm going to explain these in our upcoming videos in which we're going to go over user defined functions so i hope you like this video if you have any questions please comment down below and you can also check the link in the description in order to go over our PineScript video tutorial series so that you can learn PineScript from scratch. Make sure, please make sure to subscribe so that you can get our upcoming video updates and see you guys in the next video. Thank you.